Okay, let's get going. Um, well, I'm Richard Crowder from CH2M Hill. I'm going to be briefly talking about the next generation of flood modeling software uh, from our organization. It's a bit of a repeat of a uh, the uh, user conference that we had last Wednesday in London, where we had over uh, 100 participants come to our, our flood conference. Um, but before I start, if I can move on to the next slide. If it will move me down. There we go. A bit of a background to myself. Um, uh, I have uh, been a, a user of uh, flood modeling software for over 20 years, and I've um, uh, written or been author of two independent flood modeling software benchmarking studies uh, for the Environment Agency, and also the author, lead author of the chapter on hydraulic modeling for the Environment Agency's fluvial design guide. I've also got a PhD in computational hydraulics, uh, and I've published more than 20 papers. Um, and I've got a real passion, really, for using technology and developing latest methods to tackle a complex problem in the flooding arena. So that's a bit about me, uh, and I'm going to talk about some of the, the cool new tools that we've got at the moment. It's just taking a short while to update the screen for me. So what I would like to do um, is cover, mention what I'll be uh, covering today. Uh, I'll be doing a health and safety moment. I'll do a brief history of the UK's leading flood modeling software uh, and an introduction to the next release uh, that's going to be coming out soon. And I'll give you a sneak preview of what it looks like. So first of all, um, health and safety moment. This is something that we do all the time at CH Drum Hill at the beginning of any meeting. And I thought quite a, a, an apt one to use today, given the weather and the inclement weather that we're getting at the moment, certainly in the north of England where I live, is that uh, the mornings are getting a lot frostier uh, and we can expect perhaps some snow in the near future. And so it's to make sure that when you're getting up in the morning or you're getting back to your car at the end of the day, that you spend time to make sure that you've got clear visibility out of your car before you start your journey. I mean, um, it's no good just creating a small view window. You need to have clear vision uh, forward and back and to the left and right. Because it's not only yourself that you're putting at risk, it's actually other road users and pedestrians. It's very easy just to sway to the middle of the road because you haven't got clear visibility. So really, uh, my uh, health and safety moment today is really make sure that you've got clear visibility when you're getting into your car before you start your journey. And also make sure that your bottle wash is topped up. Okay, next slide. Well, as many of you will know, um, the flood modeling software from CH Drum Hill traces it back more than 40 years. Um, it's become the industry standard in the UK, uh, and the version that you, you're familiar with as an ISIS, many of you, has been around for, for more than 20 years. In fact, it was almost 20 years ago when I was a young researcher myself um, that I led the Environment Agency's first uh, benchmarking study on hydraulic river modeling software packages, which included ISIS. It had about 14, 15 different software packages. Um, and at that time, I had no idea that I would end up joining the company that would end up uh, developing and um, using that software while it is an industry standard. So it's been pretty pretty amazing and, and I'm very proud to have been part of that. But over the last 20 years, a lot has changed. Um, the organization I work for has changed. Uh, the demands of users of the software have changed. Technology has changed in so many ways, but not the underlying hydraulics. That's That's been well known and well proven for many uh, a century. And I'm sure that um, those who've known me for some time will say that I perhaps changed a little. Perhaps I don't have as much hair as I used to. Well, today, what I want to briefly talk to you about is, is the next generation of flood products um, that are associated with ISIS and what's going forward. But before I talk about this, I want to re just really recap what's been happening over the past 40 years. So back in the 1970s, um, we had Onda and Divast were created. Um, they're the roots of the 1D and 2D solvers we commonly use for flood modeling in the UK, certainly within the ISIS solvers they are. And in the 1980s, uh, the software was chosen to develop the first detailed hydraulic modeling river uh, uh, model of the River Thames in the UK. In the early 1990s, uh, version 1 of ISIS was proven um, um, by the Environment Agency, benchmarking studies again, um, and has, has been a leading software package there. In 2001, um, the Mekong River Commission uh, adopted the software 
uh, for, Asia, for one of Asia's largest rivers basins, and today it's part of their flood forecasting system. In uh, 2005, the software was integrated with the real-time operational system at the Thames Barrier. In 2008, uh, version 3 of the software, uh, which is out at the moment that most people are using, uh, have been uh, using it uh, widely. And it's, that was the first time in 2008 that the full, fully functional free version became available. Um, then in 2011, uh, we released the, the Fast Solver, which has become hugely popular for, for modelers doing quick, quick studies to get a, a quick appreciation of the flood risks and also to help them with model building to get model stability quite quickly. So that's a bit of a bit of the background. Um, giving you a bit of the mission and, and, and what we're trying to do here with our software, well, we've got a, a commitment to make a free, fully version, uh, fully functional version available for everyone. Um, and that's that's got a, a wide benefit, not just for researchers and academics, but for small organizations who can't afford expensive software. It also helps uh, many users uh, adopt it quite easily and understand it without the risk of uh, knowing that they've got expensive costs um, in the future to be available. And it's also got a flexible licensing arrangement, so if you've got large models, you want specific features and capability, you can do that. But something that's been uh, widely um, uh, praised by a lot of our users is the open data file system, which is quite unique, we think, to some of other uh, options that users have. By having an open data file system, it's been able to allow expert users to uh, delve into the data file themselves. It's also enabled them to create their own custom systems around it, so it can be built. Uh, the software can be built into their own systems if they wish. Um, and there's some good examples out there at the moment where people have done that. Of course, it's technically robust and integration with third-party solvers, the likes of TwoFlow. So, what is it actually being used for? The software. Um, well, there's a number of examples where it's been used um, across the world. And in the UK, it can be used at different scales of study for uh, local flood risk study to actually national scale studies. It's been used for actual, um, the largest one that I'm aware of at the moment is in excess of 30,000 square kilometers uh, of an active job at the moment, which is a detailed 1D, 2D model. Um, you might also want to use it for a different time scale of study. For example, if you've just got maybe a few hours that you want to uh, get a result in, or you might have several months or years to do a study and you can spend a lot of time, you can uh, consider your modeling options around that. And of course, the different types of flood peril, ranging from fluvial and coastal um, through to dam break and levee analysis, it's typically used for. And you can link in ground models as well. And then there's a range of applications, not only just identifying the flood risk, but also, also through to forecasting, warning, and operational control and incident management. So a wide range of uses. So a quick look back at this. Um, in London, it's been trusted by the city for the flood mapping uh, and strategic studies. It's part of the flood forecasting system, and it's the, also the operational, one of the operational tools at the Thames Barrier. In Boston, uh, the FAST solver was used to identify areas that were prone to flooding at future milestones that took uh, data from or results from uh, sewer models and put this into uh, a surface water 2D model uh, across the area with direct rainfall to understand what are the options for protecting um, Boston, not only now but in the future. In Sydney, uh, it's been uh, used to do detailed strategic planning and understanding the impacts of climate change on critical infrastructure through the city. And in Ontario, Canada, um, it was a good example where free open source data has been used to quickly update um, local maps that weren't updated for almost 40, 50 years to understand what are the typical velocities and depths you might get in a particular area. And that's that, that, the results of the study that you can see in front of you were done in literally just a few days using open source data. So for more than 18 months now, um, the team at CH2 and have been working on uh, the next generation of the ISIS software uh, for use for flood modeling. And it's actually more than a year ago that we decided to change the name of ISIS. Um, some of you will, um, I'm sure, find it um, no surprise that we've decided to change our name for various reasons. We didn't want to share it with um, a credit card company in the States or a pharmaceutical company. Um, also, there's the, the dog in Downton Abbey, but there's also that group in the Middle East, um, which we do not wish to share our name with. Um, but therefore, we, we've decided uh, some time ago, even before the troubles in the Middle East, to change the name. and so. From now on, our flood modeling software, the next release is going to be known as Flood Modeler Pro. 
it's going to keep all the same features uh, of the current version, but it's going to have a modern uh, user interface, which I'll talk about in a minute. As you can see in the logo, we've kept the distinctive wave, but more importantly, we've kept all of the great features that the users are familiar with today and added some new ones as well. But before I talk to you about Flood Modeler Pro in, in specifically, there's a few other things that I, I want to cover which are part of the, the suite of products. So, for example, uh, Flood Viewer uh, is a part of uh, the, the, the Flood Modeling Suite. If you're not familiar with it, it's a, a very simple and intuitive interface that's based on a web browser technology. So you don't need any licensed files at all. You can freely share it, um, and it removes the need for any of the software. As you can see here, it's been adopted by the Environment Agency for use in Gold Command during the flood incident. And, and here's the, the picture on the top right is the UK Prime Minister being briefed at a flood incident control room uh, using the software. Um, it's freely available and it comes part of uh, as a as an included add-on to Flood Model Pro and also as a standalone application. There's also um, the Flood Alert, uh, our free smartphone app. Uh, has now also become more closely integrated with Flood Model Pro and the family of products. It's used by more than uh, well, tens of thousands of individuals across the world, uh, across the UK, England and Wales specifically, to provide them with real-time information. Apart from being something cool um, to show your families or colleagues um, uh, and say that you you perhaps developed a model uh, using uh, ISIS or Flood Model Pro that helps drive the data that goes into this, it could actually save your life or a colleague's life or a family's life at some point in time. So if you've not already done so, I do urge you to, to download it because it gives you um, flood alert and flood warning information near you at specific locations like postcodes and also a national overview. Uh, another product, part of the suite now, is Flood Portal. Um, this is a, a data asset management system. It's a web-based tool um, which is flexible and modular. And it's used for basically stakeholders sharing information. It's used by project delivery partners for uh, flood incident records. It could be used for consultation on mappings or compliance reporting or flood incident reporting. And also the things like vulnerability hotspot analysis. It's been used by a number of our clients at the moment and is available for others as well. So that's, that's a brief review of, of what's there as part of the suite. Um, but the first 40 years was, was just the beginning, really. So what we're going to do is we're going to package these all together and call them Flood Modeler Suite. And as part of Flood Modeler Suite, you've got Flood Modeler Pro. Oh, it's not animated. We've got Flood Modeler Pro, Flood Viewer, Flood Alert, and Flood, Port, Flood Portal. Sorry. So hopefully quite clear um, in what each of the products do. We've deliberately chosen the names to be meaningful um, to the end user. So. Back to Flood Model Pro specifically, it's a new interface. Uh, it's got streamlined workflows all based around um, the, the Flood Modeler and, and doing Flood Model projects. Uh, it's not got lots of um, other tools that you might want to do, um, but other types of projects, but it's, it's all focused around the Flood Modeler needs. There are other products that we've got to help with water quality or sediment transport purposes, modeling if you wish, but you will be able to do that within Flood Model Pro as well. It's got integrated web mapping services, new file management, and a new licensing structure. Uh, something that we've tried, well, we, we've insisted on keeping to is backward compatibility. So if users have got a, a, an existing ISIS model, they can bring it straight into a Flood Model Pro, uh, and with minimal effort, or perhaps no effort, can actually run it straight off. We've maintained the open file structure. Um, all the, re the robust, quick, and reliable solvers are there. That's not changed at all, and we continue with integration with third party solvers. So briefly, for those of you who aren't familiar with the open data file structure, uh, it's basically just a, a text file uh, or an XML file that you can uh, use a, a text editor um, or an XML editor to, to open and view and change the values, values yourself. It's compatible with standard um, data standards such as Esri, MapInfo, AutoCAD, and the Environment Agency's cross-section survey data format. That's the EACSD format, if you're familiar with it. And it easily integrates or is designed to be able to be integrated with custom modeling tools and processes that you may have or others develop. The solvers within uh, uh, the ISIS and will be in Flood Model Pro are exactly the same. There's a, a 1D solver that has both steady and unsteady um, methods of calculation. 
It includes an extensive range of complex structures, bridges, weir siphons. It's perhaps one of the most com comprehensive um, software packages out there that can deal with structures. And if you've got a particularly difficult one, um, there are ways to, um, or if you've got one that isn't standard, you can uh, develop your own rating curves or a structure, or if you wanted, we can let's develop one for you. It also includes operational rules, um, which is why it's used in barrier and other locations. And then the 2D solvers. Uh, there's three 2D, 2D solvers, the ADI, TVD, and FAST. The ADI is the one that most people would use um, for normal usage. The TVD is designed for shock capturing, so when you've got maybe a levee or embankment failure, or you've got um, a dam failure, uh, you'd use that solver. And then we've got the FAST solver, which is typically ten, thousands of times faster than the other two, but you can use to get a quick look and feel of the, the flooding characteristics, and it also speeds up uh, your analysis. And of course, you can link the 2D solvers uh, to other. So, for example, Swim, Two Flow, and it's open and well compliant. For those uh, who aren't expert modelers, I've just included this very simple diagram to show you how you go about building a model network. And whenever you're doing 1D or 2D or 1D, 2D, it's built up of uh, a number of elements. So, typically, you would model your river channel as, as a 1D uh, uh, element. Um, on, the, on your floodplain, you'd either use extended cross sections, 1D cross sections, you'd perhaps use a, a 1D reservoir unit uh, if you wanted a quick model. You then, um, if you wanted greater detail, as in the flow directions, um, depths and velocities at particular locations of importance, you could go to a 2D domain uh, on your floodplain. And then also you can include structures um, within the 1D channel or on the floodplain if you wish, you can embed it either way you want. So basically, you're building or schematizing your model using um, kind of a um, building blocks, Lego building blocks, for example, but using 1D and 2D components. So, um, because this is, um, I can't do any live demos of Flood Modeler Pro, I've got a number of um, screen captures to show you what it looks like. Um, and I'll give you some more details of a live demo that's coming up in a few weeks. So, here is what the, the new interface looks like. Um, it's, it's, it's laid out in hopefully a very logical way. And so for the center bit, which is the main important bit, is your, your map area, uh, which is where all your mapping goes on. So you've got a, a particular, you've got a, a very visual view of your location, the structures that you've got, the, the, the network that you've come up with. Down the uh, left-hand side here is a, a new area for file management. So you can see where all your files are, which are your networks, your event data, your initial conditions, any spatial data that you've got, um, and all your simulation stuff. At the bottom, you've got all your GIS layers, so you can see what you've got um, in your model. Um, and on the right-hand side, you've got your network uh, list, which is very similar to what you had in the, what have in the current version of ISIS 3.7. Um, and then across the top, you've got your familiar ribbon that you will get in a lot of um, uh, Windows applications. So, for example, here we've, we've split it out into um, networks, GIS data, map data, view, and settings. So, I'm trying to move on now. There we go. So, let's look at the, the, the 1D model building tools, for, for example. Okay. Within this section, you'll be able to build uh, any river sections that you've got. Uh, you can pick a, a river cross section or interpolates. You've got uh, all the boundary conditions that you, you might yeah, use in a typical 1D model. Uh, the structures, so for example, weirs, and there's a drop-down list um, that you can use to select different structures and your shortcuts. Um, any types of um, connectors that you might have to link to uh, a 2D model or another model, so for manholes, for example, or reservoirs, lateral spillings, or junctions, or any other types of structure that you might want to use on a regular basis. Okay. For your 2D model build, um, you've got a very similar toolkit, but as you might have, you've got your computational area here. Uh, you can define active areas, boundary lines, the links between your 1 and 2D models, and you've got uh, tools to help you with that. Um, for those of you uh, who are um, routinely use TwoFlow with ISIS, there's some building tools there as well to help you do that and streamline the process. Go down again. 
Then you've got all your hydrology tools, so you can put in your different hydrology boundaries. You've got all the standard units there, as in um, the FEH and R the FH that are not frequently used in the UK, but if you're using the software internationally, the USSCS is commonly used, um, or you've got your own custom ones if you wish to build them in as well. There's some map tools uh, to help you specifically with the mapping. Uh, so you can add different GIS layers, you can add different spills, you've got links to like uh, tin, tin file building or links to KML files for Google Earth. You can also link directly through to, to Flip Viewer, um, as in there. Uh, a nice feature here is, is on the map tools is if you're constantly working or routinely working with particular areas of the model, you can bookmark it, so you, you can click on a bookmark and take you straight back there, so you don't have to keep zooming in or trying to find things. That's extremely useful. You can add notes to your model, um, and you've got uh, different tools for geoprocessing. You might read that as well. And then finally, um, simulation. You might be just be doing a 1D simulation or a 2D. You might have existing models that you, you wish to open, um, and then of course you've got your run. Uh, button, which is what you're frequently going to be using. Onto the simulation one. Oh, sorry, there's a, something missing. But on the results one, uh, you would be able to look at cross sections, long sections, time series, uh, X, Y series spots. So all, all the, the standard routine things that you would be doing with uh, ISIS 3.7, you can do with Flood Modeler Pro. And it's done in a more streamlined way to help you do it, and also uh, updated graphics. Unfortunately, because um, the way the presentation has been delivering, some of the animation or the, the slides that I wanted to come in aren't working, so I can't show you everything. Briefly going back to some of the, the map features here. Uh, as you'd expect with any GIS package, you can do zoom in and zoom out. You can toggle on your, your, your nodes. For example, there's, there's uh, different things that you can toggle on lock to make your, your view a lot easier and simple to use. Um, so if you're zooming in, um, the map uh, automatically goes through a web mapping service. So whether you're um, looking to open data, you can do that, or you've got your own um, in-house web mapping service for, for your own mapping data, you can link to that as well. And what we uh, did at last week's demo is do a live demo to show how you can link to the environment agencies. Uh, open source data, which is very quick and easy to do. And as you see, as you, as you um, zoom into a particular location, the background mapping will change um, for the best resolution that you're dealing with. And again, that will depend upon the, the web mapping service that you're using and the different layers that you've got. But it's a very useful feature for when you're doing very detailed work in particular locations. If you're editing a particular cross section, um, the cross section form is almost identical to what you had in ISIS 3.7, so complete familiar, familiarity there. Uh, and the way of schematizing the model is exactly the same. So all the lessons that you've learned before um, uh, can be directly translated to this as well. If you want to look at particular cross-section data, you can do that. And if you've got particular results already loaded, you can see the, the water levels go up and down. Um, if you're doing a lot of data processing, I want to change global values. There's the toolbox, um, which is constantly, which is constantly being updated with new tools as users require them. So, for example, you want to do a global roughness change uh, to all your sections. If you're doing a sensitivity analysis, you can go into that and use that particular tool to go and change all the, the cross-section roughnesses values quite quickly. There's also things that help you there with calibration or if you're doing water quality work um, or spill coefficients. There's, there's lots of different tools there. The 1D network, the 2D network, and for linking as well. Um, a nice feature in the next in the, for Model Pro is that you can actually search on the nodes for a particular uh, structure if you're working on a structure or a number of structures. So for here, we're using a search on on a uh, crump weir, so uh, we can filter that whole data file to find out um, the crump weir and just edit those if we wish to do changes on those or to do um, anything else that we wish to do with it. The run forms, uh, when you're doing a simulation, is very similar to before. Again, you'll uh, be familiar with the, the real-time run window, so you can see uh, how stable your model is, what the inflows and outflows are. That's not changed at all, really. And also, when you're doing uh, a run simulation, you'll use the steady 
uh, or unsteady simulations and again set your start and end times no different to what you were before using um, for, for looking at results you can just simply uh, select a number of cross sections on your map and then it will automatically draw the long section and you can do an animation obviously the animation won't work in this but it gives you a nice um, long section view of your water, su water surface profile and you can step through to particular time steps if you wish um, and add other data to it as well uh, a feature that uh, most people I'm sure will be using is the, the mapping at the end of the project or at the end of your simulation you want to quickly find out where it's flooded and there's been a lot of work on this to help you very quickly produce a flood map not only from a 2D model but from a 1D model so if you've got um, uh, a 1D, 2D model you can m merge the results very quickly and efficiently together to get a seamless flood map for the whole area you can also uh, export directly to Google Earth so um, it's not on the screen capture but on a previous one there was a, a link to Google Earth if you press export uh, it will do it on the fly and load Google Earth for you so you can um, produce a nice animation fly by if you wish and depending on what version you, got, you can record it as well I believe so I mean that was a, a quick tour of of the new interface and some of the key features I think some of you would be interested to know is actually how do you use it so I'm going to do literally a two-minute guided tour as how you go about building a new 1D, 2D model. So uh, the basic thing that you would normally start off with is your, your DTM that you've got at the, at the back. Uh, for this particular example that we did live last week, uh, we got the DTM uh, kindly from the Environment Agency, for the example. Something near Carlisle. Uh, then we used um, uh, data import. So we had all the cross-sections from a survey that had been provided for us in XY data file format or poly reference. So we just basically uh, loaded the file. And it was just simply selecting the cross sections that we wanted and dragging and dropping it into our network. Uh, so literally dragging and dropping these over here. Uh, once it's done that, it will automatically uh, place them in the, the map event view and list them in the, the node network so you can see where they are. And then the next stage is to simply uh, almost drag and drop the, the hydrological boundary units onto this and you attach it to your upstream and downstream. So upstream is actually at the bottom of the image and downstream is at the top of the image in this particular case and again it's a similar um, boundary unit as you well the same boundary unit that you'd have in ISIS 3.7 where you define the flow and time series in this particular case and we had a, an eight hour simulation that we did a demo on if you wanted um, you can toggle off some of the um, icons so you can get a better view of the, the position of the cross sections there are tools within the model pro so you can actually uh, click and uh, extend cross sections onto the flip plane if you wish again improving the workflow um, to do a 2d domain you will simply kind of select the area that you want um, to be your 2d domain and the next thing to do is actually say well, where how are you going to attach it from your your 1d model to your 2d model so there's tools to say well I'm going to start up my uh, my upstream cross section and my downstream cross section so you'll define the crew of cross sections that you're going to start at you can define the type of link that you're doing so we're going to do a, a level link in this case you can do flow links or weir links as well and then you define where you actually save the file that defines the link as a shape file so those are the three key things that you need to do and as you do that as you might just see here if you've got a keen eye it's added another line along there and what you have to do during um, um, the process is just literally click close to each of the cross sections as you go around and it will actually pick up the uh, cross section and do the link line for you automatically when you're doing a 2d simulation you'll define the grid size again or what you want so you can uh, quickly change it from maybe 5 10 or 20 meter grid without having to redefine all the underlying data it will do that on the fly for you and once you've run it you can bring the results by dragging and dropping um, your your results layer from from down here uh, into your map view uh, and then as an example of this this particular model which used a 20 meter grid took about 40 seconds to run from start to the finish so the 1d 2d link model to produce this flood map to do the simulation and produce the flood map it was extremely quick to do so um, that's a very quick tour of, of how some of the tools work uh, what I want to um, briefly talk about now is when it's going to be available for people to use um, and then do some questions so uh, 
In January, we're going to have open registration for beta testing. Those who are um, supported users of the software at the moment uh, will be allowed to be part of the beta test program. Uh, I can announce that those who are part of this uh, webinar will also be invited if you wish. If you get in touch with me um, or the organizers uh, later this week, uh, we'll make sure that an invite goes out to you. There'll be a three-week beta testing in February, and then the final release will be um, in early spring. There'll be a number of training and transition workshops to help people um, move over to Flood Modeler Pro, depending upon your ability. And so there'll be introductory webinars, and, and then the series like, like today, but going in a bit more detail. There'll be half and full day transition workshops for both experienced and novice users. There'll be new training materials, tricks, quick start guides, and we're updating all the software manuals. There's going to be a free version of the software. At the beginning, I said one of our missions was to have a free version, so um, you know, there'll be no catches, no surprises, no money. You'll get 250 1D nodes and 100,000 2D cells for all 2D solvers. That's a big change in the licensing for the free version. We believe in providing a tool that's usable for almost any uh, practical job at a local level. Flood Model Pro itself, you'll now get 1,000 nodes and 400,000 2D cells for all three solvers. And it's exactly the same price as what 3, ISIS 3.7 is today. And you can buy add-ons for the unlimited nodes and additional cores on the two blow links if you wish. We've got a new website that all this information is on, so if you've uh, not been to it recently, uh, have a visit to ch2m.com slash floodmodeler or go to www.floodmodeler.com. Both of those will work. If you've got an ISIS user link that you've been using in the past, it will redirect you, so don't worry about that. Uh, and finally, we've got uh, our new social media channels, which you can follow, uh, follow us on and, and get updated information and join the debate. Um, you certainly be a beta tester. We'll be encouraging people to use that to provide feedback uh, and their experiences from it. Thank you very much. I think I've used all the time up. Now time for some questions and answers. If you could use the um, panel on the left-hand side, I believe, to raise your question. And I will read it out um, and try and give you an answer. Oh, we've got a few questions coming in already. I'll wait till they pop up. What's that's coming through? I'm just going to take a sip. My right, first question um, from Helen. Can a PhD student use the pro for free? Uh, the answer is no uh, and yes. Um, if you've got a particular uh, um, a PhD project that you're undertaking, uh, we're happy to try and support you in your PhD work and can provide um, versions of the software. If it's being used for teaching purposes uh, across an uh, university, we can provide up to 50 licenses for the price of one, and that's our licensing model. So, um, but you'll find that the free version will actually cover a lot of needs. Um, but if you've got a particular need, do come and speak to us. Um, Matt Horrocks has asked a question. Uh, any idea uh, whether model build times are quicker? Well, uh, we certainly hope so. I mean, we put a lot of work into streamlining the workflow process to make the model building much quicker and easier. I mean, the example that I, I showed you before, um, Dr. John Wicks, who gave the, the live demo last week, he did start to finish building the model and getting the results and producing the flood maps in about 15 minutes, start to finish. So it is pretty quick. And if you've got all the data to hand, um, you, can, you, can, you can get stuff out in minutes, especially if you're doing the pass over. Okay? Uh, but obviously, if your model is getting more complex and you want to add more detail, it's going to take you more time. But certainly much quicker than uh, ISIS 3.7, and we believe much uh, quicker than a lot of the other alternative packages that you can use. Um, a question from Alex Burney. Could you explain the web mapping service options? OK. Um, within uh, Flood Model Pro, you've, if there's a web mapping service that's out there available um, that you can get hold of. It's a question of just getting the, the web link for it, the user and password, if it needs those and entering it into a form that's within Flood Model Pro, and it should load it uh, automatically. You can save it, um, so you don't have to redo it each time. So for example, when we did last week's demo 
Um, we used the Environment Agency as an example where we brought in the, um, the flood zone maps, um, which are freely accessible through open, open data um, and linked live uh, in, the, in the session showing people how you actually did it. And it took literally two minutes to do it start to finish. Um, and of course, if you've got your own web mapping service or a paid for one that you use, that you can link, you can link to those as well. Uh, Robert Birch, I think it is. Harry Richard, thanks very much for the interesting talk. Thank you. Uh, the cost of 5250 is that a one-time payment or an annual license cost? That is a one-time payment. Uh, you pay that and you can uh, basically go away and use it for your heart's content for as long as you wish. Um, if you want to support and maintenance, so you, you, you get access to the, the help desk, uh, you can raise uh, support queries and tickets, and you want to get updates of the software, you need to pay an annual support maintenance, which is 15%, uh, and that's done on an annual basis. If you compare that to uh, all alternative software packages out there, it is a significant um, cost saving. I mean, um, other software typically used for this sort of work might cost you four times as much just to buy, the license, and then it's four times as much uh, each year for the support maintenance. So it's good value. And for organizations that have a, a large number of licenses, we run a discount plan as well to reduce the cost. Any more questions? Okay, I think that's it everyone. Thank you for your time today. Uh, we can close and uh, if you want to copy this presentation I believe it will be made available. If you wish to speak to me uh, later or email me, my email address is richard.crowder at ch2m.com.